What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of How to Get Away with Murder this season six, episode 11, The Reckoning, okay? So we start off with Annalise. She is in a jail cell. You know, she's waking up because she's woken up by the sound of a baby crying. And I'm like, what's going on? They let babies up in jails like that? No, that just got to be a dream or whatever. So she like, you know, y'all need to stop that baby. We got to get the baby. And she, somehow the... The jail door opens up, so that's how we really know that it's a dream. You know, she's going down there. We see this black baby sitting right there just laying in a blanket just by herself. And then next thing you know, somebody reaches out from a jail, an opposite jail cell, and just grabs her leg, and she can't get to the baby. And then she wakes up, and we see what's going on, the reason why that, um that hand pulled her leg is because she's on restriction in real life. Girl, they done found Annalise, took her ass to the courthouse, and put her on motherfucking house arrest, okay? Listen, Annalise is in the bed with her mama. Her mama then came down there just to keep an eye on her for the time being, okay? Came up here to keep an eye on her, see how she doing or whatever. Girl, they had Annalise up in that courthouse looking fucked up. I said, damn, bitch, you couldn't even get her a wet toilet so she could wipe the sweat off her face or whatever? I mean, face greasy as shit, bitch. I said, damn, she couldn't even get a shirt okay y'all could have gave her a little jacket or something you know give her a little prison well like let her look a little bit decent i see i feel like they just wanted to humiliate her okay now see miss prosecutor lady that we saw last week who had put out all the stuff about you know how the kids went on ahead and they turned on annalise okay you know they trying to build a case against annalise the only thing that they charge annalise for is you know escaping the country and using um fraudulent names and stuff like that Two goddamn charges that ain't shit. Even the judge said, bitch, for real, that's what we doing. Okay, mind you, um, they was like, you know what, Annalise, you know this shit could have been so much worse than what it is, so I'm going to let it go. Because she was like, listen, because they were trying to say, I just want her to um, have a house arrest for right now until we go to trial because she a flight risk. She was like, listen, I got an elderly mama. She got dementia. I need to take care of her. Bitch, you weren't thinking about your mama when you left, okay, to be quite honest. That's what I was thinking. You know what I'm saying? You was in another country under a false identity, and you up here want to use the excuse about your mama being elderly and shit like that. I said, girl, okay, whatever. But the judge, you know... Went on ahead and let that go. Um, put her on house arrest or whatever. She on the phone with Tegan. She wake up in the middle of the night, get on the phone with Tegan, you know, because Tegan's supposed to be her lawyer. She want this um, evidence of particulars to come out so that they can go ahead and reveal everything that's, um, you know, they're trying to charge her with because they she already know that they are hiding behind this fraudulent charge or whatever um, to have the real charges that they want to spring on her she know it's some more charges that's gonna come and she know they worse okay now at this point you know tegan trying to give annalise what the um play by play what it is okay girl don't represent yourself a bleak said a person that want to be their own client is a fool you know what i'm saying and he was like uh annalise like you know he ain't never met a lawyer like me i said okay pump your brakes a little bit you know can't get a little bit ahead of ourselves okay you know at this point they talking and yapping it up. Mind you, both of them in their bonnets and head scars and shit. I said, oh, come on, black woman moment. Okay, because bitch, as soon as I get off this camera, I'm putting mine on and I'm taking my ass to bed. Okay, but girl, listen. I'm sitting here like, what's going on? Because at this point, it was a pause between Annalise and Tegan. And then T was like, you know, I got you and I'm going to be here for you if you need to. And she revving on that, t on that, um, on that, uh, comforter. I said, uh-oh. Okay, Tegan said, bitch, we're going to get a scene out of me and Annalise before this show get over with. And I hope they do. Okay, because Tegan was giving me all the feels like, bitch, I want you to come rub this cat. That's what she was giving me. Okay, and she was like, um, well, I'm going to let you go to sleep. It was like, you know, I can count on you or whatever. That's why I'm calling you at three something in the morning. And you answer the phone call. And I was like, okay, but I'm going to let you go to sleep. She was like, bitch, I'm up now. I'm up now. I'm up. I'm up. The fuck? <laughs> Bitch, I'm up, okay? I said, uh-uh, Tegan. She was like, when they got off the phone, Tegan on the phone, she was like, goodbye. <laughs> I said, oh, shit, Tegan. Quit showing your card. Quit showing your card because Annalise ain't showing you shit right now. Annalise laid her ass on the floor, okay, and went to sleep 
in new uh in, in the fetal position. I said, Oh, Annalise, what's that about? Girl, her mama woke up. She woke up, mama was putting all the shit away. I don't know if that was some little sherry wine that was on the table, whatever. She was like, Listen, I'm throwing all this shit away so that you won't have no temptation to go back to alcohol. You're not sleeping, bitch. This is stress, okay? She's like, Mama, I ain't had nothing to drink in five months. She said, Bitch, let's keep it that way, okay? Let's just keep it that way. You know what I'm saying? We need to buy a cat so we can put that little house arrest on the cat and let it just be running around and let you out here do what you gotta do, okay? You know, mama was trying to give her that mama home home comfort and stuff like that. Played by Miss Cicely Tyson, of course. Okay. Oh. Check on Miss Cicely. Okay. Check on Miss Tyson. I hope she doing well. I hope her and Betty White doing well in this time. Mm. 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 I just thought about that shit. But yeah. So they going through all of that. Um, next thing you know. You got the kids over there, Annalise over there talking to, not, yeah, Annalise was talking to, uh, what's your majigga? <clears throat> Frank and, um, Laurel. Ooh, not that bitch, not that bitch. Frank and Bonnie, okay, talking about this chain of particulars. What is that and the evidence and I got Tegan helping me with this. Oh, so you trust Tegan? I said, Frank, calm the fuck down, calm the fuck down, okay? You knew that Tegan had to do what she had to do. And like Tegan said, bitch, Laurel blackmailed the fuck out of her. And Laurel, Laurel looked like a shady bitch that'll do some shit like that. So, you know, she said Laurel was like, I tell my daddy that you was the Jane Doe that called him in and shit like that if you don't help me escape, okay? And so she had to do what she had to do to keep her um life okay so you probably would have did the same thing C come up off of it and at this point you know here go bonnie well he trusted the kids huh we trust the kids too but look what happened with asher i was like you know get about your feelings and i have to remember because bonnie ain't going to the funeral for asher because annalise was like you might as well just go she said no he did this shit to himself bonnie is in her feelings because bonnie and asher used to fuck around i forgot all about that it hit me that hard like oh shit damn that's why she mad okay and i was like mm, all these residual feelings just going on going off and everything it's just crazy you know how everything is just so slight uh so freaking connected meanwhile over there at the house with the kids is, they over there making snooker doodles or whatever Asher stuff that he like and fucking up the cookies. You know, Oliver. <sighs> Oliver irks me, okay? He has to find a silver lining in everything. You know, he has to be the one that makes everything better. And, uh, like, can we just let it be like it is, okay? Let us be in our grief. We, okay, I know you feel bad about Asher and all that shit, but Asher kind of deserved what happened to him a little bit. Let, let's be quite honest. He brought this shit on himself like Bonnie said, you know? And they can't go to the funeral, and they worried about whether or not Annalise is, they how long they going to be out for the trial, until the trial. They haven't even set a date. And it was like, the longer that they take to set a date, the longer or the more easy it is for them to find, uh, Annalise to find out that they done turned on her. And here go Oliver. She ain't going to find out. I said, bitch, who the fuck you talking about? You're talking about goddamn Annalise, okay? Girl, I said, um, Oliver, you need to stop. Shut up. Just shut up. Meanwhile, um... Back over there at, 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 what's his face? Dave. Gabe apartment, somebody knock on the goddamn door, right? Somebody knock on the door. Who is it? It's Chloe. It's Asher's sister. You know, I can't stand that bitch. I really can't stand that bitch. She was like, you know, I was over here getting some of Asher things or whatever, and I want to talk to the person, you know, he's supposed to be a friend of yours or whatever the fuck. You're not coming to the funeral either. I wouldn't be able to come to the funeral if I was a killer and um, to my, the victim funeral or whatever. Trying to blame Gabe and make him seem like he the killer and all that shit just because, you know, Asher called her on his phone you know and the backstory on that is Asher came over there because he broke his phone said I give you $64,000 that $64,000 check that he won you know if you let me use your phone and he called his sister telling him what telling her whatever and all he wanted to know was is it true that Wes did all this by himself of course Asher is gonna tell him listen bitch at this point in time I really wasn't there so I don't know and I'm just trying to say that I don't feel like he did all of that shit. But it is what it is. I said, Asher, you know what? You need to shut the fuck up. Okay? Shut the fuck up. Do I think Gabe had something to do with Asher death? No, I do not. No, I do not. 
So it continues with this flashback on this phone call that Asher had with his sister, right? So Chloe, you know, she was like, who the hell is this calling this phone number, whatever. And she was like, Asher, uh, it's Asher. Don't hang up, don't hang up. Listen, the kids know. Michaela and them, they know, okay? You know, she was like, how the fuck did they find out? Asher, listen, um, they was asking me questions and then Michaela asked me questions and I just couldn't lie to her. So, you know, it just slipped the fuck out. And so it was like, I'm scared. I need some help or whatever. And she was like, listen, Listen, I can't come out there and get you because I'm in Atlanta City. But what we're going to do is I want you to, um, you know, just wait around for a second because I'm going to get you a car to come out there. He said it's graduation night, so it's going to take forever. It was like, just calm down. Just calm down. He was like, I'm such an idiot and all this shit. And so she was like, you can't be more of an idiot than me, all right? You know, what if the FBI find out and all this stuff and the deal going to be off and whatever. So the reason why Asher was doing all this shit was because, you know, um, his sister and his mama basically um, guilt tripped him into, you know, saving their asses, okay? Saving the mama ass for what the daddy did, you know what I'm saying? Because she was a party to it. She knew what was going on. She didn't report it, and it's going to fall back on her. So it's like she was a willing participant, and she would have went to jail. And so in order for her not to go to jail, Asher has to be turned informant. Y'all remember that? That's a refresher course on that, okay? So meanwhile, we move over there to Bonnie and um Frank. Bonnie and Frank, they just like, listen, Bonnie said, you know, at this point in time, the kids done chose themselves, okay? How come we can't choose ourselves, all right? You know, and Bonnie just worried about um, if Laurel comes back, what the fuck Frank gonna do? He was like, listen, bitch, if that bitch come back, that bitch come back. I'm still choosing you. And I just need to know if you're going to choose me. And you and Annalise got this little thing going on. And I ain't trying to break up that. You know, y'all got y'all a little special bond or whatever. I ain't trying to break up that. She was like, don't y'all get y'all thing? Yeah, we got our thing, but it's nothing really like y'all's, okay? But at the end of the day, I'm always going to choose you. I'm always going to be here for you. I just need to know which way you're going to roll. And if it's not my way, that's cool or whatever. We can still rock and do what we got to do. I'm sitting here like... Oh, get out my face. Moving on from that, Annalise at the crib, right, with her mama. She getting ready. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? A plus, yes, bitch. Yes, queen for the fucking afro, okay? I said, bitch, you better pluck your afro out and you better style that bitch up. I said, yes, you do that shit, okay? And I was like, you know, Annalise was looking real nice, all right? Her mama was trying to figure out what's going on, where you finna go. She said, listen, the judge didn't call me down to the courtyard, to the courthouse. I need to come down there and talk to her, whatever. You know, she was like, for the um rule of peculiarities. She said, listen, mom, you're going to have to stop listening to my stuff. Okay, just because you are here in my house, you have to abide by my rules, okay? I can't wait. Oh, girl, I'm going to tell my mama that one day when she comes in. I'm like, bitch, why you are girl now so I can still get slapped in my own place? Listen, no. um, We ain't got time for that, okay? <laughs> She'll come over. Oh, who that? But anyway, so, um... You know, yeah, he was like, why don't you just go ahead and get you a lawyer, okay, so they can help you out and, you know, get you off of this stuff and whatever. Because Annalise so adamant, and that's what Tegan was trying to tell her. That's why she called it and uh, Abraham Lincoln, because Annalise want to do her own lawyership. You know, she want to be her own lawyer, whatever. And so um, at this point, she was like, why don't you have your little lady friend who was a lesbian come over here and help you? You talking about Eve Mama? And truth be told, let me tell you something. Since we on this track, I might as well just put the blunt, um, put, put it all out there. Me and her was more than friends, okay? Mama said, more than friends? What you mean by that? She was like, listen, Mama, more than friends. Mama said... So you mean like this? She was like, yeah, mama, like this and like that. Scissoring. You know, we was doing all of that stuff. I said, oh, mm -hmm. mama was like, that's what, and Lee said, that's why I went to um, therapy. It was before Sam, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I met him because I went to therapy for it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she was like, mm, ain't that something? Say about a goddamn bell because here come Tegan. Tegan wanted to come up in there and be all up in Miss Ophelia face. Hey, Miss Ophelia, girl, how you doing? Uh, Annalise said, no, nah, girl, let's go. Let's go. She was like, girl, that's what it look nice. I said, Tegan, Tegan trying to get cool points. I see what you're trying to do. Bitch, Tegan said, I'm good with your mama too. I can be good with you. <laughs> Everybody likes me and your family. Come on, let's make this happen. She, uh, hell, mama, eat. mama still stuck on Nate. We all was like, Nate ain't no goddamn hell. Fuck him. Okay, girl, they go down to the court. 
And Annalise is in a room with the judge and the prosecutor, the uh, AUSA, DOG and all this shit. And trying to get her to, um, you know, go ahead and to reveal them charges. Okay, so mama playing hardball saying we ain't got to do nothing. Why is it that you feel like we got some other charges or whatever that's against you and all this stuff? And um, <clears throat> at this point, you know... Um, and at least, you know, she put a little case out there. Then here come the judge trying to say, I mean, I could do this, but I can't do this. But, you know, by the, the law and all this stuff, here come Tegan. Tegan said, bitch, by this court case or this court case, so-and-so versus so-and-so, this is what can happen. And you can put it out there, whatever. Bitch, the judge said, um, excuse me, who the fuck are you? She was like, and at least reluctantly said, bitch, this is my co-counsel. It was like, but I don't see your name down here on this paper. She said, listen, it's going to be on there, okay? It's going to be on there. Don't worry about that. But my client, she deserves, you know, for her to, um, you know, know what charges. Because, listen, the reason why half of the goddamn Philly hates my ass is because they think that I could fucking kill my husband. And that's because of the fuck shit job that the goddamn FBI done did. Then leak some shit to the goddamn press and put it all out there. Now you telling me that uh, I can't get the um, charge. Just because I know they own some fuck shit. They making me paranoid, but I know that they are, okay? Girl, they ain't win the case. They ain't win the case. But Tegan happy because now she on um, you know, Annalise's side and her cancel and all that stuff or whatever. I said, girl, you warmed your way up into that. She said, baby, baby, you got to take baby steps. You don't have to just go full throttle. You got to take baby steps to get what you want sometimes. I said, I feel you on that, girl. I feel you, you know? And they looking for her mama, girl. Mama is gone. I said, where Miss Ophelia gone to? Bitch probably gone to Nate. And I don't mean to call a lady a bitch. You know, that's what I, I always call. I always say that. But I said, Mama probably gone over there to Nate. My bad. And at least won her motion, okay? She won her motion to get, you know, the, the charges. See what all the charges was against her. Meanwhile, we go back to this Asher um thing that happened before he passed away. So, Gabe is still trying to get his phone or whatever from Asher. But Asher's still on the phone. You know, he gets a message from his sister that the car will be there at so-and-so time or whatever. Okay. He started making a tape about, you know, recording on the phone, um... You know, his little last moments and, you know, what he didn't want to happen and how his little last words, his little last thoughts. Okay, that's what it was. Just in case he get something happened to him, this is what went down and all this shit. Meanwhile, Gabriel had already had this conversation with Chloe and told her, listen, the reason why I didn't tell the FBI that I knew um, that Ashley came to see me and, um, you know, that he used my phone or whatever is because uh, I don't trust the FBI. They had already uh, tried to bring me up on some terrorism charge, you know. And Annalise probably had something to do with this shit. You know, at this point, Chloe is like savior, okay? Because, you know, Gabriel was like, don't tell nobody about this. She was like, bitch, the FBI is the one that told me about it, okay? So we already know. So Gabriel went over there to the FBI people and told them and gave them the phone. And it was like, why you got two phones? That's why you didn't tell us so you can, um, you know, um, won't have to explain why you got two phones or whatever. He was like, listen... The dude came to see me. I didn't have nothing to do with him. And yes, we did have our bouts, okay? We had our issues, but I didn't kill him. I'm the one that came out the door and saw him and called 911, okay? That's what it is. So they amended his um little, his little testimony or whatever, you know, his witness statement. That's what they did. So at this point... Back at the crib, Annalise trying to figure out what is going on with her mama, okay? Tegan going down the road, you know, they was like, um, we didn't check the security tapes. They didn't see her leaving out. Um, I knocked on the doors and don't nobody know, okay? At this point, something triggered Annalise to remember, like, Nate, you know? So she gets on the phone and she called Nate and she was like, she didn't even say hello. Nate said, she's here. I was like, oh my God, thank you. And, you know, um... <laughs> Mama was trying to say something. Oh, mama, I can take care of myself and all this stuff. Woo, woo, woo. And, and then Nate hung up on her ass. Nate hung up on Annalise. I said, you know what, Nate? You are getting beside yourself. Mama sat there and read the fuck out of Nate. Said, listen, let me tell you something. I understand that you feel some type of way, but you need to bring your ass down a few notches, okay? Not just one, not just two, but a few notches, okay? Because I understand you are in your feelings. You're hurt. You over here acting like a poor little hurt bitch boy and you need to grow the fuck up just because you got all these goddamn muscles and all this stuff and you big and bad or whatever you still acting like a hurt little boy okay and at least had the opportunity to turn your ass in last christmas okay she had a deal in place but she said no you want to know why nathaniel nathaniel 
because she cared about you. That's why, okay? She got your daddy off. You know, she went head to head with the Supreme Court or whatever. And just because shit didn't work out the way that you wanted it to work out, that don't mean that it's her fault because it's not, okay? You need to get up off of it. That's what you need to do. You know, at this point, Nate comes back over there, um, you know, and bring Mama over there. But before that, <laughs> before that, <laughs> Mama come back. Well, let me just go ahead. Mama, uh, Nate brought Mama back over there and basically told Annalise, listen, the next time you leave the house, have some home care, okay? And she was like, listen, you got what you wanted. Show him his her house will rest a bracelet. And she was like, listen, at the end of the day, your mama already read me for filth, okay? But um, I still don't feel sorry for you. I want to feel sorry for you, but baby, I just don't feel sorry for you, okay? Deuces. I said, damn, Nate. And at least didn't even protest that shit. Just let him go ahead and do what the fuck you got to do. Michaela and Connor out there, you know, um, looking at an old video of Asher that he did about by Felicia and all this shit. Next thing you know, they trying to figure out what they did wrong and, you know, um, why they, what what would happen if Annalise, did they do the right move or whatever. It was like, the only reason why we up in this mess is because of her. Because of shit that happened three years ago when um, Sam died and she told us that she was protect us and never let us get caught. And guess what happened? We fucking got caught. Finally. And I said, oh shit. She said, we finally being smart. I said, you know what? That smart gonna come beat you and, 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 and bite y'all in the ass, okay? I really hope something happened to them. I really do because Annalise really could have, could, to be quite honest, I don't even remember per se all the circumstances around Sam's death, but I know Annalise didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? But the situation, she could have had a little hand in it to set it up a little bit, but that wasn't the, the, the what she wanted. That wasn't the intention. She did not set out for them to kill her husband, okay? And if Annalise really didn't give a shit about them, Annalise could have set them up and called the cops on their ass and told them that they the one told on them and sent them to jail for killing her husband any fucking time. But what she do, she kept on uh, protecting them and everything. And this is the thing she get. This is the thing she get. Regardless of how deep they kept getting the shit, she still had their backs. And then as soon as they get into a little bit of trouble that they seem like they can't get out of, girl, what they do? They turn on her ass. Ain't that some shit? Meanwhile, Annalise up there with her mama, mama up in the bed talking to her. She was like, listen, mama, everything can't be fixed with no man, okay? And then they get into this whole conversation about, you know, Eve and she was thinking like the reason probably why, you know, what happened to all the um, men that you was going with or whatever. She was like, that's probably the hat, the fact that I was fucking with a bitch. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of like girl. She was like, are you gay? Annalise, she was like, at this point, I really don't know. And it's understandable. She's confused still at this point. She's still fighting. She And I don't feel like she's confused. She's still fighting herself. And I don't think that she understands that at this point, it's okay to be bisexual. You don't even have to be gay. You like both, okay? You know, you like the D and you like the P, you know? It is, it is what it is, you know? And so, Mama was like... I think this probably happened because of what happened to you and Uncle Clyde and him doing what he did to you. You know, and Elise was assaulted, sexually raped and all that shit by her uncle. And, um, you know, she was like, or oh, I could just like girls. That's what it is. You know, she was like, did you love her? Did you love Eve? I was like, oh my God. They had a moment. They had a moment and she was understanding. Next thing you know, the next day, you got Oliver and goddamn kind of underneath the covers or whatever. And um, Michaela come in and was like, listen, I got to, um, I got to call for my lawyer come to find out they didn't grant Annalise the motion to get the charges against her all the charges against her and now what's gonna happen next she gonna find out that it was us that um fucking snitched on her okay and Annalise is over there with Bonnie and Frank and they going over all this shit from Simon Drake to Rebecca to Sinclair to everything from three years ago starting with fucking Sam and it was like well since we don't see nothing with um you know they got all this stuff from shit that they don't really know about a project bonfire they had to get a whole bunch of this other information from other people and who that had to be the kids Michaela and goddamn Connor she said so the little bitch is snitched I said yes yes and at this point they they scared because Annalise called them over there because Annalise said because Frank was like can I go fuck their ass up she was like nah we gotta play this smart okay um you know make them feel comfortable that's what we got to do. And so at this point, you know, she sent out a text to him saying, can you come over? Okay. 
Michaela called the FBI agent and was like, what do we do? He said, go over there. He was like, what happened if something happens or whatever? He was like, her mom is in town. She ain't going to do nothing. So, you know, calm the fuck down. Plus, it's a clause in y'all little uh, immunity agreement that you have to continue for the cooperations with this um effort. So, you have to take your ass over there. So, suck that shit up and take your ass over there. So, they sent her a text saying, they'll be over there in an hour. I said, oh, shit. So, we go back to Asher, right? Asher finally gets a knock on the door after he finishes. Well, he finishes his little video. He was about to send it off, I guess, to an email or whoever. Probably to another, probably an email. And before he could do that, somebody knocked on the door. And he opened up the door and he was like, finally, it's you. You came. And obviously, it was somebody that he knew, right? So, um, you know, we get back over there to Gabriel's place. And he hears, like, this noise happening outside. And so, he goes and he looks outside, girls. And, guys, he looks outside. You know, he listens to the door like, oh, my God, you can hear this struggle going on. And this person saying, no, please don't. You know, and it was Asher. Next thing you know, it was like a thump or whatever. Next thing you know, he gets down on the floor and he looks underneath the floor. Now, tell me was I wrong, but what those women's shoes, okay? I kept rewinding and I kept, I paused that shit and I said, those got to be women's shoes, okay? Those got to be women's shoes. And you saw the poker come down on Asher. And Gabriel went like, his eyes got big, like he knew who it was, okay? And I'm sitting here thinking, bitch, if it was Laurel who came back just to take him out because she found out he was an informant and all that shit, bitch, I'm a sh Woo! Thank you, girl, but, um, no, bitch, no, bitch, you should have stayed gone if it was you, girls, okay? Um, meanwhile, over there at Annalise's place, um, mama's sitting down in the couch, uh, in a chair in front of the kids, and, you know, she thinking that Annalise got a swing set outside, y'all want me to make some sandwiches and peanut butter and jelly, it's almost as if, you know, she's having an episode, um, because she does have dementia, and she's thinking that these little kids, little friends of Annalise's or whatever, and so Annalise took her back. And they trying to figure out, was this an act? And he was like, you know, she do got dementia, so who knows? At this point, Annalise come down there, and she was like, what's good? Okay? They was like, you tell us, all right? Because, I mean... I'm sorry about Asha. Are you really? Are you really? Oh, so that's what you mad about. Okay, listen. I am. Okay. I didn't have shit to do with that. It was like, you know, if you ain't had shit to do with that and if you was protecting us and all this shit or whatever, and, and, and why did you move down to Mexico? Why did you leave Mexico? This is Oliver. Oliver keep on talking and Lee said, listen, bitch, I can take care of myself. Okay. And you're not going to interrupt me one more time. That's what you're not going to do. Oliver, you know, you getting real big and bad in your talk. Okay. And you need to calm the fuck down because you're doing a lot, you know. Um, all of a sudden, Oliver didn't grew some balls. I don't know where they came from, but, you know, he talking a little bit too much for my liking right about now. And Annalise had to tell him, listen, I was scared and I was dumb. That's what happened. But let me tell you something. They gonna try to make, um, you know, if I really want to take y'all asses down and, and people want to start talking, I can start talking on y'all asses, okay? If, if you want to really go there, you know, because if you want to turn on me, bitch, I can turn on y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's what could happen. And they continue to lie in her face. And she put out there that the FBI got her with the help of her father, Michaela's father. Okay. Michaela was like, wait a minute, bitch. Hold up. And she was like, yes that bitch okay next thing you know bonnie and annalise having the conversation she was like listen they lied to my face and badly and bonnie was like girl what you expect i mean i'm not really too that surprised or whatever it was like um they get into their little conversations of, you know, you think that I'm one of them and all this shit or whatever. It was like, we put in a lot of work for them. We tried to protect them and all this shit. So did you, whatever. And look how they repay us and all this stuff or whatever. And then she was like, but bitch, let me tell you something. They finally turned on your ass. And I mean, at this point, can you really blame them? Because look at you. You just literally got up and left, bitch. And you ain't even say nothing. You ain't even take me. No, girl. I left and I turned right back around because I was trying to come and get your ass, okay? That's what I was trying to do. But when I went to your house, you were not there. Where the fuck were you, Bonnie? Because, I mean, you have been hurt by people before. And you, I've seen the shit that you can do, okay? I've seen the shit that you can do. So, did you do this shit to Asher? I did not do nothing to him. And, actually, I went over there to your house to see what was going on with you. That's what I went to do, okay? But you was not there. And she was like, I didn't have nothing to do with Asher. She was like, okay, bitch, I believe you. I don't know if I believe her. I kind of believe her. A little bit of me believe her. Um... And then you got Tegan going over there 
and talking to the DA or whatever, the prosecutor or whatever, and trying to get all these charges. She said, listen, you can cut charge for this and this and this and that, and I'm going to knock down this, this, and this and that all up in court, okay? And then you're talking about this fire that started at her house. She wasn't even there. She didn't even do that. Oh, yeah, but she got a history of this. This is looking like a history. They bring up her childhood home being um caught on fire and trying to make it seem like Annalise is the one that did that shit. So Tia brought it to Annalise and was like, you want to tell me what's, what's this about? Is there anything that I need to know? She was like, listen, I ain't had nothing to do with that, but I know who did it. And at this point, she was like, how did he get, it was a newspaper article from the fire back then. And it was like, how did she get this? Okay. And, um, Annalise fast forward or rewinds in her mind and was like, Nate, that bitch, when he gave her them Denver files or whatever, he, um, gave them files to the FBI so he can, um, cut himself a deal. Bitch, mama came out the room and said, that motherfucking snake. I said, oh, shit, that's where Annalise get it from. Okay. Mind you, mama had asked Annalise, how come you always in trouble with the law? Annalise was like, girl, shit, shit happens. <laughs> So Annalise is having this conversation with her mother and her mother is basically like all this stuff is going on because of what happened between um, you and Clyde and it's my fault. Okay, that's who you're really mad at. You're mad at me. And she was like, Mama, whatever happened, Clyde, that that was class doing. That had nothing to do with you. Like, don't put that on you. She was like, I left you home with him too much. And she was like, because. You were working two damn jobs because daddy left us. You had to do what you had to do when you had no idea that this was going on. That didn't excuse what he did, but that's not your fault or whatever. And she, she, bitch, mama got deep with it, okay? Mama got deep with it because mama said, you having these dreams about this baby or whatever, that baby is you. That baby is you being a little girl that you never had a chance to be, okay? And at the end of the day... You up here trying to protect. And first of all, she said, fuck Nate, okay? He ain't worth crying over, okay? And then she was like, you up here trying to protect Nate. You trying to protect these kids or whatever. Bonnie and all of them. You doing all this stuff like a mother, okay? You trying to mother them. You trying to be the parent to them that you wish you had the parent of. Which was parenting to you. You know, the same parenting that you wish you had. I said, oh, shit, bitch. You got deep, mama. Yes, Miss Cicely. Yes, Miss Tyson. Okay? Um, I said, you know, old folks will pull out some wisdom on your ass and have you sitting there like this. Even though all I asked was, can I get a piece of cake? You broke it down as the reason why I wanted that cake. And I didn't even think about that, bitch. You took it all the way back to my childhood. And that was right. That was right. Okay. I need to go talk to a therapist. Girl, she went deep with it. Okay. You know, she was like, fuck them. If they need some mothering, you send them over here to mom. Okay. And I take care of that shit. I said, oh my God. I like that. You know, I love when they had a little moments or whatever. Meanwhile, over there um, at um, Asher Place, Michaela and them is at Asher Place trying to look for whatever they looking for. And <clears throat> they hear somebody knocking on the door. And it was like, open up the door. I know you up in there or whatever. And they picked the lock to get up in there. It was Gabriel, okay, at this point. You know, they was like, what the fuck you over here for? Because I'm pretty sure you the one that killed Asher and you did this and blah, blah, blah. And at this point, you know, um, they was like, how did you get in? They was like, we didn't pick the lock. Um... Uh, we had Laurel's old key because Laurel used to live up in this apartment because it used to be West's apartment. You know what I'm saying? And so at this point, Gabriel was like, is Laurel back? And I was like, no. And he was like, oh, okay, I'm going to have to go. And they was like, wait a minute, that's real strange. Because at this point, he had a flashback. Bitch, when I said it was a woman that did that shit, I was fucking right. And we saw that it was a woman who did it. Now, I don't know if it was truly Laurel, because that would be kind of obvious. But it was some bitch that was sitting up in the car looking at the um, surveillance camera. Uh, 9 and 10, they work with the Castillos. Okay, the Castillos, you know. And um, she was sitting in that car looking at them. And you notice when... Um, Oliver had hit Asher with the poker. Michaela pushed the poker away. See, Oliver Prince were not on the pokers because he had Laurel's gloves on. All right. But when, um, you know, he dropped the poker, Michaela pushed the poker away with her bare hands. That's how her prince got on there. The lady who killed, um, uh, Asher, she picked up the poker with some black gloves on. That's why no other fingerprints was on that poker besides Michaela. I said, ain't this about a bitch? Here come, um, you know, Gabriel going over there to the detective Lanford and was like, listen, let me tell you something. Uh, I need to amend my statement again, bitch, because I think I know who killed Asher. I said, boy, 
we could have been done with this, but you know they got to stretch it out. Oh, girl. <laughs> so Annalise talked to Bonnie and uh, Frank, you know, about the whole thing with Nate. You know, they was like, go ahead and protect yourself, okay? If y'all want to run, run. They was like, nah, bitch, we here for you, okay? Three musketeers. You know, all of us or none of us. That's what it is. Okay, fine. Cool. But let's just get to, you know, the kids. I don't care if I'm skipping over stuff. I'm trying to get to the end, okay? The kids, um, McKayla get a call from uh, Agent Lanford, okay, from the FBI. And he was like, I want you to see something. You ain't in trouble, whatever. Probably want you to see something or whatever. He sent him them the um little video that Asher made, basically saying the reason why he did what he did and, you know, saying that he see good in them and they can go off and be good lawyers and just do the right thing. And basically was trying to get them to snitch, too. And it kind of worked because they, before they even looked at the video, they would already snitched on Annalise. They was like, just do the right thing, okay? I said, this ain't Spike Lee up in this bitch, okay? We ain't gonna do the right thing. The right thing is to shut the fuck up. That's what it is, you know? Girl, at this point, Gabriel had already went to the thing and told the Agent, listen, uh, it was Laurel Castillo who did it. You know what I'm saying? I saw who did it, girl. That's who did it, bitch. They saying there's um the kids over there taking toast or whatever to Asher. Next thing you know, Gabriel come over there to the house and was like, listen, let me the fuck in, bitch, because I know who killed Laurel, okay? I mean, who killed Asher. I was like, Laurel, a little bit too obvious, okay? That's a little bit too obvious, but bitch, did I see this shit coming? Now, they flash back to Asher, okay? Um, being up in the apartment and when he opened up the door, it was that lady who came to Annalise's door who was working for Xavier, okay? That old lady, you know what I'm saying? And then who was trying to play, play like she was having an Airbnb up in the same building as Annalise? Yeah, that bitch, okay? Who cut Bonnie's brakes? Yeah, that bitch, okay? Um... She came to the door. He was like, damn, it's about time. They done found out about um me being an FBI, uh, uh, informant or whatever. They was like, how you know? And I'm thinking that at this point, I was confused. I was like, so wait a minute. Ash, are you working with the Xavius, the Castillos? You working with them too? Damn, what the fuck is happening here? Okay. But um, she was like, all right, where you want me to get take you? Take me to my mama, okay? So she take him outside, and next thing you know, she was just a little bit too cheery, like, okay, come on, let's go. I was like, um, I don't trust that shit. Ash, you should have jumped out the window at that point because I ain't trust that smile at all. She pulled that poker out and hit him in the back of the head when he walked out the door and then continued to beat his ass. And then um, Gabriel saw all this shit because when back at the poli uh, FBI agent uh, office, FBI office, and when... Um, you know, Gabriel was like, it was Laura Castile that did it, bitch. He was like, I got to get the other agent Polak up in this, on this case. And she was like, okay, cool. Bitch, turn around. Why was it that bitch? And Gabriel recognized her from her fucking earrings, bitch. I said, God damn, it's the fucking FBI that did this shit, bitch. We up here thinking it's the Castiles, which technically speaking it is because she's working for them. I'm sitting here like, ain't this about a bitch? They got everybody inside on everything, girl. This was a good episode too. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it and I will see y'all later. Peace.